Hello, my name is Emma, and I apologize for my voice. I am sick. <laughs> Woo! When I was 16, I dreamt of making my very own comic. While zoning out in class one day, I came up with an interesting idea. What if I made a duo that consisted of a clown and a cowboy? There's a lot of possibilities with this dynamic, and I liked the aesthetics of both, so I was really excited about this. Webtoon just so happened to be holding one of their contests as well, where you enter a comic with a cash prize for the top three people, and an official spot for your comic on their creator team. It seemed that everything fell into place for me, but I had a problem school. I longed for the time to make a comic as much as I wanted and March 13th, 2020 came around. Y'all know that date. School's closed for two weeks. Perfect. I have time now to work on it. Another problem. I have no experience making comics and barely planned anything. So motivation and quality went down the tubes and I got burned out. Clown and cowboy died. Rest in peace. Until today, we are going to be revamping these two along with making a mock comic cover and playing around with setting a bit. But first, I'd like to talk about the company FlexiSpot. The lovely people at FlexiSpot graciously sent me one of their standing desks to try out and use, and I'll say, no complaints here. With an L-shaped desktop, I have more room to work and draw, perfect for multiple devices, and I have lots of space to take notes or doodle while I work. It's a big upgrade from my last desk that was a bit cramped, I'll admit. The desk rises with a quiet motor and a steady lift. I love little trinkets and I like to over decorate things so it's really nice to see that everything stayed in place while moving up and down. The multifunctional panel is easy to use and includes three customizable presets for easy adjustment from standing to sitting down. It also has a USB port for easy charging of your devices. If you feel like sitting but you forget you're sitting, there's a handy timer that will tell you when it's time to stand. The desk is clean and great quality. I can't wait to decorate it more. If you are interested in this desk or any of the other other desk they have available, you can use the link in my description to check out the Amazon page. Thank you so much FlexiSpot for this opportunity, and let's get back to the video. So as I mentioned, this story wasn't planned very well. I think I had a good core, but I didn't design settings, background characters, or even core characters very well. And yes, I think a comic can be done like this and done decently in this fashion. However, I don't work well without a very good plan, so this was kind of set up for failure. The little I did do of the comic couldn't actually be finished easily either since I didn't design backgrounds before drawing the characters. They were just in this weird void that wouldn't be formatted correctly if I added in the backgrounds later. I was just in the mindset of, I'll oh, cross that bridge when I get to it, and then I never got to it. This portion of the comic is when the two main characters meet, and I didn't do anything else. I didn't even see if it would be formatted right in the app. <laughs> Thumbnailing the entire thing is kind of important, people. At least in my opinion. Alright, I feel like I've introduced enough now. We'll start off with Ruth. Ruth is the clown, obviously, and her design is changing a lot in this video to the point that I don't know if you are gonna like it as much as the OG. Even though none of you are connected to her at all, I feel like it might be mixed bag. I do have reasons for this major change though. In Ruth's first design, I was really into warm color palettes. Every illustration I did, I would choose this exact color, fill a layer, lower the opacity, and put it on overlay. Satisfied me every time. But I've moved on from that now, and um, I feel like the two main characters look too similar. They complement each other great, but I want to go in a different direction. This outfit was created from her clown suit she had in the circus for easier travel since traveling played a big part in the story. I actually created like four outfits for her. I was thorough in that way, 
Dang, okay. In the original concept, the story takes place around 1910. Ruth's mother is kidnapped and held for money since the ringleader of the circus gambled all his assets away to this one bad guy that I never gave a name, but eh, doesn't matter now, I guess. The bad guys take her mom into the desert and won't give her back until the debt is paid. Ruth decides to take matters into her own hands and seek out help. I mean, this isn't terrible by any means, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and it low-key makes me cringe because I feel like the bad guys taking the mother is really random and strange. I don't know. I didn't explore any more avenues. I just kind of went with the first idea I had and that was it. Ruth's character was supposed to be the more jovial person within the dynamic. Since she's a clown, it makes sense that she would be the comic relief. Her personality was kind of random lulls, but she had a strong head on her shoulder too. In her redesign, I completely flipped her look and personality. Both of these characters have gone through several redesigns over the years, and the most recent matches this one the most, I suppose. In my most recent adaptation, I guess you could say, I think Clown and Cowboy's personalities are too similar. I want these characters to be wildly different from two worlds, but still form a bond over time, you know? They were starting to give me like Harley Quinn jokes vibes like they're both crazy and they're both in love and I feel like since she's a clown it's too similar and I didn't want that comparison made I'm keeping the change of wardrobe in the concept since I still don't think her clown attire would fit in traveling on horse through the desert so I gave her an additional outfit that she could make out of her clown outfit I don't think it's as cute as the original but Maybe I'll tweak it again down the line. You might have noticed that she does have some scars, and there is a backstory behind that from the original that I do want to keep about the same. The story goes that Ruth, before she was a clown at the circus, was a horse vaulter, which if you don't know, is basically acrobatics on a horse. Ruth loved this and was very passionate about her job. She even got a headlining gig through agreeing to jump through a ring of fire. This got a lot of publicity. So many people showed up and Ruth did her performance as practiced until, unfortunately, the horse got spooked by the fire, knocking her into the ring and setting the tent ablaze. She miraculously survived, but not without hurting herself terribly. She couldn't do what she used to do anymore, what she loved. But she also didn't want to leave the circus. Her family was there, she was born in it, an offer was made to her, and she became the circus's first female clown. It was convenient since the makeup covered the scars she hated, and through this she found she could be quite funny, getting more laughs than some of her male counterparts. I like that part a lot, and I'm keeping that for sure. I think it gives a lot of good backing to Ruth's struggles and her being a really closed off person. Female clowns in the early days of the circus were not common, to the point where it's hard to find any through research. It wasn't seen as very womanly in the 1900s, so a female clown being a headline would be known as a spectacle for sure. I will go into my plans for the overall plot later, don't you worry your little head. I hope this isn't too boring or too much for you yet. I'm trying to go into more detail than I usually would. Let me know if you like this sort of thing. I don't know. I'm trying a bunch of stuff. Uh, <laughs> here she is. She would probably have some more outfits as well, but who knows? If I ever make another video with these characters, we'll go into that, I suppose. Clayton Boone. Boone. It's a tough one. I can't yeah, I'm changing that name. This was before Dream was really anyone, so that name wasn't tainted before. It's not a bad name, but I need to change it for my personal sanity. I was already on the fence about it anyway. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, I like this one. Yeah. Theodore A. Spoon. Let's go with it. So, in his old design, Boone was supposed to be this super closed off criminal with a big reputation. When him and Ruth meet, he is in hiding from the law. He took odd jobs to get money and refuses to get caught. I can't really remember his backstory that well. I, I believe I had planned that Boone's dad was head of the police force and that the cops were working with the bad guys who kidnapped Ruth's mom. Corrupt cops, you know, nothing new. I think Clayton 
Clinton might have also been a cop, maybe killed someone, or was framed so the blame was put on him and he had to go on the run. That's alright to me, I guess, but I'm throwing most of that out the window. This design of Boone is based off of the most recent redesign of him. I really tried to give him brown hair, but in doing research, I found that almost every single male cowboy character design has brown hair and a beard, so I decided I'll keep it blonde for more recognizability. This design now is an amalgamation of all his designs, I've realized, and I really like that. It feels like it's come full circle. I want Theo to be more mysterious now. You won't get a lot of his backstory until later in the story, but he is an outlaw. I won't reveal why right now, but don't worry, that's all you gotta know. His personality is changing also. I want him to be the witty, eccentric criminal that is pretty full of himself and has the goal in life of doing whatever he wants without getting caught. So completely flipped between each other. I did this because I thought it would be interesting to play with expectations since clowns are usually portrayed as insane, happy, and overall silly, and cowboys are usually stoic and quiet. It's one of the most masculine things you can be, at least in western culture, but I didn't want Ruth to be hyper feminine and Theo to be really masculine because when I was sketching ideas for design, it started started to feel like Lore Olympus, if that makes sense, which I was not going for in the slightest. I could honestly make a whole video talking about Lore Olympus because I was really into it and then I realized how weird it is. Moving on, Boone having this big unkept hair was always a big focal point to his character because it showed a visually different side to him when he took off his hat. I decided to keep it, but it takes a new meaning since he's not closed off in his appearance anymore. I think now it shows a rebellion to the norm of the time since he tries to go against everything he's supposed to obey. However, though he seems like an open book now, he's actually the opposite. He looks for good times to fill the voids in his life and often suppresses his emotions, never opening up to anyone because he doesn't really have anyone. I just love morally gray characters. I eat it up. I feel like I've said this before. I It's very self-indulgent but please forgive here he is i think both of their designs still need tweaking who knows in another year or so they could look completely different but for now thumbs up from me for sure all right now let's move away from the concepts and make some actual artwork for these two huh if you are familiar with my content you know this is a bit different to the usual redesign video format i wanted to challenge myself a bit and create some more material for this video i'm gonna start out with a mock cover if this story had a comic book what would the first edition's cover look like kind of fun, right? I took into account my original planned comic cover, but in the end, I opted for something way different. I've been obsessed with spotlight lighting recently, and I've been dying for the chance to do it in a piece, so I figured let's do it. It's eye-catching and visually interesting, and oh, it's actually really challenging. <laughs> yeah, I struggled bad, and this one took way longer than I thought, but in the end, I think it turned out pretty okay. It's annoying because I loved how the line art and sketch turned out, and then once I went to the one thing I actually like to do, down the hill it went. In addition, I had to make a logo, which I despise. I don't know if I like making logos in other programs, but in Procreate, I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate making logos. This time, though, I didn't hate it as much since it was a breeze compared to what I got myself into with the shading. Now that I'm drawing them together, we'll talk about their main plot or mostly what leads up to them meeting. My rough plan for this story now is Ruth being a part of a circus whose ringleader has recently died. He owned the business and passes it to his son. Ruth and the ringleader's son grew up together and everyone is kind of like family in that circus. Ruth starts to feel dry and burnt out and feels she needs to break away from the circus to find herself on her own. When she confides in her friend about this, he basically forbades it, revealing that he wants to marry her and that she couldn't possibly go by herself, what with her condition. No one would accept her outside of the circus. They were her family, her friends. She could never find someone else to love her. Ruth was also a headline act and drew in crowds every night. 
If the circus lost its best asset, they would have major losses. So the ringleader's son, who was once Ruth's best friend, traps her in an engagement she feels she can't escape and makes sure she can't leave. If she did, they could and would find her. Now Ruth really needed to get out. She slips away without notice one day, but knows she doesn't have long. Ruth knows she can't do this by herself. She needs someone who knows how to be invisible, how to escape police looking for her. She gets a tip that there's a well-known criminal in town that could help her, Theodore Boone. A hearty cash offering to him with the promise of a new, fresh life, they make a deal and set off together. One ready for a new chapter and the other ready for a big cash-in. I don't know if this will stay, but I like the idea. It's a lot more simple than the OG, and if this was going to be my first attempt at making a full-blown comic this is much more manageable to me here's the cover all right this one was lower heavy i know but in the next illustration we'll talk about their relationship <laughs> and for something i need major practice in backgrounds. There's rarely an artist who says they enjoy making backgrounds. I used to not mind it that much, but recently I cannot bring myself to put the effort in. Every time I plan a background for an illustration, I want to lay in bed and I'm alive. At least with this background, it's outside in the desert, so the shapes are way more organic and pliable than, say, a complex room. I've done a lot of background work with these two over the years, but chose this one to redraw since I was most proud of it at the time of drawing and I don't think it's that horrible. I just think it needs a few tweaks to make it something stronger, you know? I did change quite a bit about it since these two characters are basically dead comparatively, but I did do the same pose. There's just a different story behind it now. In the original, I think it was to show the general admiration that Clayton had for Ruth, but in this version of the story, Ruth is wanting to prove to Theo, sorry for the name changing, if that's confusing, that she can in fact be spontaneous after a lot of mocking from him. She gets up on the horse in a ready position. She hadn't done this since her acrobatics days, standing tall like she had a million times before. Theo is stunned by this, a rare thing to see in him. Nothing really shocks him anymore, but she keeps on doing it. Oh, do I smell? <laughs> oh, I can't smell. I'm sick, but do I smell <laughs> a ship? That was weird. Um, <laughs> I haven't really talked about their dynamic together much yet, so Ruth and Theo, like I said, are polar opposites, so they bump heads a lot. And though they agree on a partnership, they realize they don't really like each other. As much as Theo picks on Ruth, I feel like that's a given being his personality. Ruth also messes with him a fair bit. It's just in a more calculated way that gets under his skin 10 times more. My idea as this hypothetical comic plays out is the layers upon layers both of these characters have in clothing and makeup slowly shed off as they grow and open up, visually showing them taking their emotional walls down. I had this idea when I first made this story and it stuck with me back. So I had to share it in this video because I, I just, I love that idea. Over time traveling together, they grow closer, close enough to realize they've never had a connection like theirs with anyone else. Could they really just say goodbye at the end of their trip? It was just business, right? Right? And that's all you get for now. <laughs> Who knows, I might make another video discussing more because, oh, I love them. I love them now. I am so tired. I am so, so tired. This video is so tiring. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for 21K, what? Dude, that's crazy. Um, Special video coming soon for that one. I promise, I promise it will come. If you are interested, check out FlexiSpot. Again, link in the description. Please like and comment ideas if you have them for this concept. I'd love to hear it. Anything, anything. Just tell me your thoughts. I'd love to hear. I love getting comments. I'll respond to as much as I can. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, peace. <laughs>